Tonight's hearings will be a watershed moment in the fight to protect our democracy from the big lie of the hard right. The committee will lay bare the truth that the American people must well, know. The January 6th uh, committee, first public hearing, primetime hearing tonight. You can see it. Martha and I will be covering it on uh, Fox Business. Obviously, uh, Fox News Channel will have continuing coverage and dip in throughout the other shows here. Uh, the New York Times has an op-ed by uh, David Brooks. January 6th committee has already blown it. We need a committee to locate the weaknesses in our democratic system and society and find ways to address them. Core problem here is not the minutia of who texted what to Chief of Staff Mark Meadows on January 6th last year. The core problem is that there are millions of Americans who have three convictions, that the election was stolen, that violence is justified in order to rectify it, and that the rules and norms that hold our society together don't matter. Let's bring in our panel, Josh Kraschauer, politics editor for National Journal, Leslie Marshall, Democratic strategist, and Byron York, chief political correspondent of the Washington Examiner. Um, Byron, your thoughts on tonight? It seems like they've set the bar pretty high. Um, they need to deliver something that tells this narrative. They have. First of all, we, we needed a January 6th investigation, so there should be a January 6th investigation. There's still more to learn, but it appears that Democrats may have oversold this a bit. Uh, in the uh, weeks leading up to this, they really played it up big. Representative Jamie Raskin said the findings would blow the roof off the Capitol. Now we're hearing some unidentified committee sources saying, well, don't expect anything too shocking or stunning tonight. Look at it more as an opening argument. Uh, but I think what's important to remember here is what we don't see. We're going to see portions of interviews, maybe the thousand interviews that the committee uh, has conducted, but we're not going to see them subjected to the adversarial process that we see in usual congressional hearings. Usually you have Republicans and Democrats who disagree about something and they argue over material. In this case, the two Republicans on the committee uh, were both appointed by Speaker Pelosi uh, as well as the seven Democrats, and they appear to be in lockstep. So that's going to give this hearing a completely different dynamic mm -hmm. from what we normally see in a congressional hearing. Leslie, what about that, that there is no opposition, essentially? There is no pushback. Uh, that you would usually have in a bipartisan committee, conceding that there are two Republican lawmakers on here, but they are in lockstep and also have been chosen by House Speaker Pelosi. I would agree somewhat with what Byron says, but if you think back to Watergate, I, I think we're kind of doing this 50 years later in a sense. We're saying to the American people, or at least this the, this January 6th investigative committee is, uh, these are your tax dollars. This is what we have found so far. I think there are going to be many things the American people don't know about. They're going to hear from the horse's mouth. They're going to see actual uh, testimony, although it will be edited, as Byron pointed out, and they will see video. I think it's really essential especially in a time where there is questioning about legitimacy of elections. And I think it is essential when you're talking about, uh, you know, possibly subverting a free and fair election in the nation that's supposed to be the leader of freedom throughout the world with democracy and free and fair elections, for the American people to see what they found thus far and to make up their mind for themselves. I think in a, in a nation that screams for transparency and, and for facts, I, I think it's essential and I and I think everybody should you know watch it and come away with uh, what they want I don't think it's going to move the needle politically and I don't think it should but I think the American people deserve to know what truly happened and what the findings have been thus far yeah I think there's also a question about whether this inquiry goes down the roads that Republicans wanted to go down and that's why the security was lax what were the decisions made there and will that be part of the expanded inquiry also Republicans Josh uh, point to to the dichotomy of these sound bites. All right, first, here's Donald Trump on that day, the president at the time, um, on the mall, January 6th. You are going to walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. I love Pennsylvania Avenue. And we're going to the Capitol. We're tr going to try and give them the kind of pride and boldness that they need to take back our country. And then they juxtapose that with this soundbite and the events of the past couple of days. Chuck Schumer. 
I want to tell you, Gorsuch. I want to tell you, Kavanaugh. You have released the whirlwind, and you will pay the price. You won't know what hit you if you go forward with these awful decisions. The Senate Majority Leader on the steps of the Supreme Court, and obviously you have a man that, that was arrested for threatening to kill uh, Brett Kavanaugh outside his home. Um, the coverage of that has been diminished uh, in, in contrast to the January 6 hearings. I know it's complex, but that's what they say. Look at those two things. Well, look, Brett, there, extremism is a challenge on all sides, and there's been some recent polling showing that the number of Republicans and Democrats alike supporting violence, if, if they don't get their way, is at near historic levels. So it, it, this is a phenomenon that's very troublesome, and the threats, the, the, the violent uh, suspect who came to Brett Kavanaugh's house with, with a gun and, and weaponry, I mean, that's extremely disturbing, and it shows how hot a tinderbox we have in this country. You know, I think what the Democrats are going to be trying to do, and Liz Cheney and, and Kinzinger on the committee, they're going to not just talk about January 6th, they're going to talk about what the White House, what President Trump was doing in the run-up to January 6th. And yeah, I don't think it's going to move the political needle. I agree with both Byron and Leslie. But if this is successful, it, it's not just going to be about January 6th. It's going to be about some of the testimony that former Trump officials talk about that shows that this wasn't just organic, but it was pre-planned, that there was a whole lot of activity going on at the highest levels trying to prepare for, for a moment to overturn the 2020 election. Yeah, and we'll cover it all, all aspects of it. We'll also cover everything dealing with this guy, with Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, panel, thank you so much.